Dear all classmates, welcome back to the ATPG chapter. In this video, we are going to introduce a more sophisticated ATPG algorithm, the FAN algorithm, which was proposed in 1983 after the Polden algorithm. The FAN algorithm also belongs to the path based ATPG category. As we recall, the D algorithm made decision at every internal node of the circuit. As we can see, there are many gates in this circuit, and every blue lines indicate a decision point. So there are so many decisions in the D algorithm. So D algorithm is actually very slow. On the other hand, the potent algorithm ignore the internal information. The potent algorithm only makes decision at the primary input. Although the number of primary input is small, but there is too little information, so potent can make mistake very often. And the fan algorithm actually offers a good trade-off between the D algorithm and the Polden algorithm. The fan algorithm only makes decision at headlines and the fan out stem. As you can see, the number of headlines and the fan out stem is much smaller than the number of gates, but it's more than the number of input. So the FAN algorithm offers a good trade-off between the number of decision and the amount of information. The full name of the FAN algorithm is FAN out oriented test generation. It proposed four improvements over the potent algorithm. Number one improvement is that FAN makes decision at hand line or FAN out stem. Number two, FAN proposed to perform both forward and backward implication. Number three, FAN use unique sensitization. Number four, FAN proposed multiple backtrace. We will go through these improvements one by one. So now let's start from the first one. In ATPG, justifying a fan out free cone is very easy. As we can see in this picture, this subcircuit is a fan out free cone because it contains no fan out inside this logic. And if we want to justify the head of this fan out free cone, if we want, let's say, k to be 1, we can simply backtrace this circuit and obtain a value a equal to 1, b equal to 1, and uh, f equal to 1. So we are guaranteed to find an answer. So this is a very good thing. From this example, we can see that actually we don't need to worry about the value of primary input. All we need to do is that we can make a decision at the headline and then we are done. So now let's formally define the headline. Bound line means the line fed directly or indirectly by fan out stem. For example, in this circuit, we have a fan out stem J so I and the K are bound lines because they are fed directly by the fan out stem. Also, M is fed indirectly by fan out stem. So I, K, and M are bound lines. The other lines in the circuit are free lines. In this example, all the primary inputs 
and the H and the J, they are free lines. So we have eight free lines in this example. And finally, the head lines are free lines. That is either a fan out stem such as J or input to a gate with bound output such as H. So in this circuit, we have two head lines. They are H and J. So the fan algorithm proposed to make decision at head line. The reason is very simple, because fan out free cone can be isolated from the rest of circuit by cutting the head line, as we can see in this picture. The orange dot represents a head line, and on the left of the head line is fan out free cone. So we can partition this circuit by cutting the head line. And we just make decision at the headline. Similarly, we can cut this part from the headline. In this way, we can greatly reduce our search space. The assignments of PI that fit headline can be deferred until all the other objectives have been achieved because we are guaranteed to find assignment for this primary input, so we don't have to worry about them. In this way, we can greatly reduce our search space. For example, in this circuit, we have primary inputs ABC and the J is the headline. The potent algorithm makes decision at primary input ABC so the decision tree is large. It has three levels. Every time we make a mistake, we need to backtrack. So this is a large search space. On the contrary, the fan algorithm makes decision only at the headline. So there is only one level in the decision tree. It's much smaller and easier to search. So we can see that the fan algorithm is faster. Now it's time for you to practice. Given this circuit, please determine which are the bound lines, which are the free lines, and identify the head lines in the circuit. Now please pause the video. Okay, are you done yet? In this picture, we have one fan out stem, which is E. So all the lines that are fed directly or indirectly by the fan out are bound line. So L, F, H, J, K are all bound lines. The others, A, B, C, E are free lines. And uh, we identified the headline to be a fan out stem, which is E, or the line that feeds bounded output. So A is also headline. So the answer is that A and the E are headlines. Have you got them correctly? Now let's move on to the second improvement. In the past, potent does not consider the internal value. So it only performs the forward implication, but not the backward implication. However, fan also consider the value of internal nodes, and it performs both forward and the backward implication. In this way, fan can collect more information about the circuit so it can make more correct decision. For example, in this circuit, suppose that we want to detect L stuck at 1, 4. So the objective is to control L to 0. For the fan algorithm, it first perform backward implication 
So J, K, and E are both set to 1. And then we backward implication so that H is 0 and A is 1 and also B is 1. And then we perform forward implication so that we know G is 1 and then we backward again so that we know C is 0. In this way, we can find the correct assignment without any back check. However, the potent algorithm is not very smart. For the same circuit, if we want to control L to 0, then the potent algorithm will backtrace to 1 and 0 and 0. Finally, it would set input B to 0. But this is actually a wrong decision. So it would have to backtrack. So this example shows that the fan algorithm is smarter than the potent algorithm. Now let's see a simple fan example. Suppose we want to detect stuck at 0, 04 at the output of gate G1. In this circuit, we can identify six headlines. They are A, B, C, E, F, and the output of G4. They are highlighted in red color. Now, the objective is to set the output of G1 to 1. And we can perform implication so that we know both A and B are 1. And then the objective is to propagate the four effect through G3. So we want to control the output of G2 to 0. Similarly, using implication, we know that C and E must be 1. And then we want to propagate this four effect through G5. So we want to control the output of G4 to 1 because this is a headline. So we just directly assign G4 output to 1. We don't need to go to the primary input because FAM makes decision at the headline. And then we perform simulation. We detect the 4. At the end of the ATPG, we can now justify the headline. So we choose H to be 1. And we successfully generate the test pattern. From this small example, we can see the feature of FAN. It has implication, it makes decision at headline, and uh, we can justify the headline at the end of ATPG. Now, it's time for you to work on this quiz. Suppose we want to control k to 1. Please apply the implication to determine the value of headlines a and e. Now, please pause the video and work on this quiz. OK. Are you finished? Now. We can see that if k is 1, then both h and j should be 0. And f should be 1, and e should be 1. And now we know that a should be 0. So the answer is a equals to 0, e equals to 1 by forward and the backward implication. Have you got it correctly? So now, let's move on to the other two improvements. Improvement number three, unique sensitization. When there is only one gate in the D frontier, we can check if there is only one unique path from the D frontier to the output. 
If so, we can set the side input to non-controlling values to ensure that D is propagated to the output successfully. For example, G2 is the only gate in the D frontier. If we want to propagate D to the output, we must go through this unique path. The FAN algorithm recognizes there is only one unique D frontier and only one path to output edge. Therefore, the FAN algorithm would make required assignments. The output of G1 is 1 and the E is 1, F is 1. And also A is assigned to 1. Therefore, B is assigned to 0. This is a correct assignment to ensure that D can be propagated to the output successfully. However, the potent algorithm does not recognize this unique path sensitization. So, for the potent algorithm, it would assign G1 to 1 and then it backtrace to A because there is a inverter here. So, it would assign A to 0 which would block the propagation of the D to the output edge. So the X pass would disappear. So this is a wrong assignment. So we know that the fan algorithm is smarter than the potent algorithm when there is a unique pass exists in the circuit. Now, this is the last improvement, multiple backtrace. In the potent algorithm, we use the concept of depth first search, DFS. That means we perform one single backtrace at a time. For example, in this circuit, suppose the objective value is zero. The potent algorithm would backtrace along this path and assign one primary input to one. But this is not enough. So the potent algorithm needs another backtrace to a second input and so on so forth. So the potent algorithm needs six single backtraces to achieve this objective. However, the fan algorithm uses the concept of breadth first search, BFS. That means fan algorithm perform multiple parallel search at a time. For the same circuit and the same objective value, the fan algorithm will perform parallel multiple backtrace. So there are two objective ones and then there are two objective zeros and eventually there are six ones backtrace at the same time. We can see that the fan algorithm is much faster than the potent algorithm. However, things become more complicated when we have multiple backtraces. There are more than one objective value. For a signal X, we can have different number of zeros and ones required. Suppose that N0 represents the number of zero required, and N1 represents the number of one required. So we need to handle this objective when we perform multiple backtrace. For example, suppose for this end gate, the output Y, we need five zeros and three ones. They are coming from different sources. So 
how can we backtrace this AND gate? First of all, for a easy and specified input, let's say x1, the values of n0 and n1 are identical to that of the output. For the other input, let's say x2 and x3, their n0 values are 0 and their n1 values are 3. It's the same as the n1 of the output. This is because 0 is a controlling value, so we need only one zero at the input. However, one is a non-controlling value, so we need all three ones at the input. For a fan out stem, let's say this fan out has three branches and their n0 values and n1 values are shown in this figure. Then the value of fan out stem x is the summation of the corresponding n values of the branches. For example, n0 of x is equal to the summation of n0 of y's and the n1 of x is equal to the summation of n1 of y. This is something like counting the vote. If there are more zeros than ones, then we would consider to assign this fan out stem to zero first. Now let's see this example. Suppose that we have an objective K05. Now we perform a multiple backtrace to the headline A and the E. Because this is a NOR gate, so both of the inputs has to be assigned zero at the same time. So we have H50 and the J50. For this end gate, because zero is a controlling value, so when we perform multiple backtrace, we only need one N0 at primary input A. For this inverter, F is equal to 0, 0,5. Now we have this fan out branch. So we count the summation and we can obtain E05. So now we know we can assign A to 0 and E to 1. Now it's time for you to practice. Starting from this objective K50, please perform multiple backtrace to headline and uh, please choose H before J when we backtrace. Now please pause the video and the practice. Okay, have you finished yet? Because this is a controlling value, so we would only need one one at input H. And now we backtrace this through the end gate. And uh, at the fan out stem, we do a summation. So the answer is E05. Have you got it correctly? The multiple backtrace algorithm sounds like a very good idea, but things can be very complicated when conflict occurs. Let's say we change this gate to an OR gate. Starting from the same objective K05, now H50 and then A50, L50, F05. 
If we do a summation of these two values, we will get E55. This means that we require five zeros and uh, five ones. So this is a conflict. How can we handle this conflict? A simple idea is that we can assign a value that is the most requested. And then we start the next backtrace. If there is something wrong, then we need to backtrack. So this is the algorithm of multiple backtrace. It may look very complicated, but don't be afraid. We will illustrate an example later. Given initial objective or find out objective, we would decue an objective k vk from the q, where k vk indicate that we want a value vk on the signal k. If k is a headline, that means that we already backtrace all the way back to the headline. So we simply put this objective into a headline objective and we are done. If k is a fan out branch, then we do the summation of n0 and n1 as the example we have shown in page 15. If k is a gate, then we simply follow the rule that we have shown on page 15. We would backtrace according to the inversion of the gate and the controlling value of k. We would do the corresponding assignment. Continue from the previous page. If we still have fan out objective, then we would decue one highest level fan out stem k from the fan out objective, and we would assign it to be zero or one, depend on which value is larger. If there is no conflict on the fan out stem, then we would continue the backtrace without any problem. However, if there is conflict, we would stop the backtrace and uh, put this into final objective. At the end, if there is no more final objective, then we would decue one headline objective and call it our final objective. In summary, given initial objective or final objective, the multiple backtrace generate a final objective. It can be either an objective on the fan out or an objective on the headline. Here is an example. Suppose we want to detect P stuck at 0, 04. So our initial objective is P equal to 1. Now we have three entries in our current objective, which are M equal to 1, G2 equal to 1, and uh, Q equal to 1. Now let's decue the first entry. We process the first objective. Because this is a non-controlling value, so H equal to 1 is our headline objective. In this picture, red dash lines such as H and A indicate headlines where we can make decisions. And the G1 equal to 1 is pushed into our queue, waiting to be processed later. Now we process the second entry, which is G2 equal to 1. Because this is a fan out, so we would increase the number of N1 by 1. 
That means we have one vote for G to be one. In this picture, green lines such as G and F indicate final steps where we can also make decisions. Now we process our next entry, which is Q equal to one. Because this is a NAND gate, so we would generate another objective, which is F2 equal to zero. This would be enqueued in the current objective waiting to be processed. Now we process the next entry, G1 equal to one. Because this is a fan out, so we would increment the n1 of g by 1. Now, the value is 2. And then we process the next entry, which is f2 equal to 0. Because this is a fan out, so n0 of f is incremented by 1. Now we have no current objective. According to our algorithm on slide page 20, we would consider fan out objectives before headline objectives. So now let's consider the fan out objectives on G. Because there is no conflict for fan out stem G, so we can continue our backtrace. Now we move on to next level of backtrace where A is a new headline objective and F1 is enqueued. And then when we try to resolve this final, we have a conflict. There is one N0 and the one N1. So what can we decide for our final objective F? Since N1 and N0 are equal, we just randomly choose a value. Suppose we assign F to be zero, and then we perform a forward implication. So f1 is 0, g is 0, g1 is 0, and eventually p is 0. But this is wrong. This is different from our initial objective value. That means we need to backtrack. We backtrack the value of f to 1. From this example, we can also see that because fan makes decision at fan now stem, so fan algorithm detect the inconsistency earlier. We don't have to backtrace all the way to the primary input to detect this inconsistency. Now, let's flip the value of f to 1. So everything is consistent. And uh, now we can perform multiple backtrace again. This time we obtain four objectives. They are h equal to one, a equal to one, c equal to zero, and e equal to zero. And uh, if we assign these values and perform forward implication, we can achieve the, our initial objective. From this example, we can see that multiple backtrace is very fast. Unfortunately, it's a little bit complicated. So you are welcome to repeat the video and understand this example better. This picture compares the difference between the potent algorithm and the fan algorithm. Given one single objective, the potent algorithm performs only single backtrace. 
However, the fan algorithm performs multiple back trace. The potent algorithm assigns only one primary input, but the fan algorithm can assign headline or fan out stem. After assignment, the potent algorithm performs only forward implication, but the fan algorithm performs both backward and forward implication. If there is any inconsistency, the fan algorithm can backtrack earlier. And when we perform depropagation, the fan algorithm also check the number of D frontier. If there is only one D frontier, we will check the unique sensitization. The potent algorithm does not consider the unique path sensitization. When we backtrack, the fan algorithm can backtrack to either headline or fan out stem, but the potent algorithm only backtrack the primary input. When we finish the test generation, the fan algorithm justify the headline. However, the potent algorithm does not support the concept of headline. So, in summary, in this video, we have learned four improvements of the fan algorithm. The fan algorithm makes decision at headline and fan out stem to reduce the search space. And the fan algorithm perform both forward and the backward implication to collect more information to make better decision. And the fan algorithm is aware of unique paths to the output. And finally, the fan algorithm perform BFS multiple backtrace to search many paths at the same time. So if you think the fan algorithm is pretty complicated, please don't be frustrated. Since the ATPG is an NP-complete problem, the algorithm to speed up ATPG is of course very complicated. Thank you for watching.